All right, Romans 5, verse 12 says, Therefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, that, and all have sinned. And as the scripture says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So many people make excuses and say, but I'm not a bad person. Well, according to the scripture, death was passed on to us through Adam's sin, and now all have sinned, according to the scripture. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression who is the figure of him who was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one <clears throat> many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, Judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more about. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life. <clears throat> so we see through, if you look at that scripture, you find a lot of statements talking by one man, by Adam, through Adam. Six times it actually mentions in that scripture, by one man, by what Adam did. You see, God gave Adam one key of life. Okay? That's all. All he had to do was be obedient to God. And this key was specially made in my workshop. <laughs> but by one man, one key was given. And Adam was Lord over the land that God had created. He was Lord in the garden. He had to dress it and keep it, not put a dress on it. He had to work and the soil and dress and all those kind of things. I know some guys got some weird imagination, but not me. <clears throat> but he was given one key, and that one key was obedience. That's all he had. He had one command not to do. Every other command was for him to do. Be fruitful, be multiply. Uh, take dominion. Do whatever, it's yours. All the blessing of God. In fact, he had eternal life. Adam had eternal life, living right there on the earth. Death was nowhere near. So, of course, when he was tempted, when Adam te was tempted, <clears throat> the devil knew that the moment, because God said to Adam, the day that you partake of that fruit, the day that you are disobedient to my command, that day you will die and die. And I wonder if Adam was wondering if there was two, um, why was there two commands? And you will die and you will die. You will die spiritually. In fact, the scripture says that we alienated from the life force of God. He was still alive. But it took him over 900 years to find out how to die. And there he died. But he says, because of obedience. Now there's a master key was the obedience that God said to him. 
But he didn't, he wasn't obedient. He listened to what Satan had to say. He listened to his wife. She said, yeah, I have some. Okay, of the fruit. It wasn't an apple, by the way. <clears throat> Many people think it was an apple. It was a fruit. But it was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It was not the tree. It was not the tree. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the knowledge of good and evil is actually, how do you know that you do something wrong when you haven't seen a command? How do you know that you do something wrong? Your conscience. So it opened up the conscience. And all of a sudden the conscience became awakened. Because Adam knew exactly he was sin. And he had sin. So he had one command. He had obedience and he had eternal life. That's why the moment that he sinned and, and uh, God addressed their situation, what they were doing, he put an angel at the tree of life. Because had Adam decided, listen, I want to live forever, because now I'm dead, or I've, uh, life force of God is cut off, he would have forever been in that state. He would have lived forever in a broken and unrighteous state. So the moment that he did, you see, Adam was the champion of the world, but he had never had a contender. And all of a sudden, here was Satan, and the he was a contender against him. And he then realized, <coughs> Satan didn't have to fight. He just had to bring a good argument. And the argument that came, that just that argument, they realized, hang on. <coughs> Through an argument, he won the entire, he became... Even Jesus said, he is the prince of this world. Jesus said, the prince of this world comes, but he has nothing in me. So immediately, the moment that, that uh, there was disobedience, the moment that the disobedience happened, of course, the key, Adam opened the doorway of eternal death. He opened the doorway. He had the key. God gave him the key and he used that very key through Adam. That's why we're talking about through Adam. All of these things. By one man's disobedience, many became sinners. So it was through that disobedience, he opened the door to eternal death. He opened the door to death, because there was no death before that. Okay? He opened the door to death. Yes, it did. I don't know why it's singing there. Yeah, I can see it. He opened the door to death and hell. That's why it talks about Jesus has the keys. <clears throat> that number two, I think maybe uh, one of the other channels, five or six. All right. <clears throat> I think number two you can actually put up a bit. But it, it could be um, that those main speakers, which is that double dual one. Yeah, no, I pulled that down. Is it? Okay, and the and the keyboard? Yeah, they need to be now. That's the main speakers. They're all down. It says it's something. They're, they're all off except you. Everything's off except you. Oh. Uh, all right, well... Anyway, he opened the door to hell. Hell was prepared, not for man, but for Satan. And he, Satan knew that he would hurt the kingdom of God if he could get people thrown into hell with those that rejected and rejected. Through death, and he destroyed him. Jesus, obviously, had to become obedient. Completely obedient. So, with Adam... Everything that Adam had done, one man's disobedience, by one man, sin entered into the world. One man. See, the whole key here is the continuation of one man, is the continuation of what one man does. His choice, his choice that he does, what Adam does. God gave him that choice. Whatever he does, it will be for everyone on the face of this earth. So his choice, he made the wrong choice. And of course, sin entered into the world. And death, 
by sin. And so death passed upon unto all men. So by one man, death entered into the entire race, human race. For they all have sinned. For if through, here's the doorway. If through the offense of one man, many be dead. Therefore, by as the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. So we see there's this transfer by one man, by one man. What Adam did, even those who never sinned according to what Adam had done, everyone, that transferred into every person. The scripture says that you're born in sin. You actually have the sin nature when you're born. Jesus Christ was the only one that took on flesh without man, but with the, woman, the seed of the woman. And therefore, he was born without corruption. So everyone else has been born is in corruption in Adam. All of them, that has happened. So in order to get the keys of hell and death, in order to get the keys, you have to turn to obedience. Someone has to be more obedient to God, and the scripture says, obedient even unto death. How many would actually die for somebody else? Rather take the place of somebody else. But that's what Jesus Christ did through, the, the, through uh, His love. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever, whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So the scripture says about Jesus that He had to taste death for everyone. He had to take the punishment of death on our behalf. So when we think about the breaking of bread, that cup, Jesus had to take, we take a cup that's sweet and the juice of the vine, and we enjoy that because it's partaking of the cup of blessing. But Jesus had to take the cup of curse, of all the curse of mankind, and all the judgment and all of the punishment he had to take upon himself. He had to destroy him that had the power of death, that is Satan. How did he do that? As scripture says, through the doorway, through death, he destroyed him that had the power of death. Had they known, the scripture says, the principalities and powers, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. It just shows you how much darkness they in. They cannot see the light. Jesus continually spoke about being resurrected from the dead. And all they could do and all they wanted to do was kill him. Because they knew that through Adam's disobedience, he would have to die. And once you're in that Hades, there was no way out. No way out. Even from Abraham's bosom, there was no way out. Hades is separated into two parts. The burning hell, okay, Hades, and the other one is Abraham's bosom. But they were still locked in that prison. All the righteous dead were there. And that's where Jesus went in and he ministered to those in Abraham's bosom. And it says, when he was resurrected, all of the, the it says some of the saints of old, of Abraham, were, were awakened. And they appeared unto many in the city. Their graves were opened. There was an earthquake. And the, the, those graves were opened. And they came out with them after his resurrection and they appeared unto many around you see to defeat death jesus had to be righteous and pay the full penalty now many people say yeah but he burnt in hell for three days and three nights and the devil jumped around and rejoiced and all the demons were rejoicing well guess what the demons aren't in hell neither is satan that's a place prepared for them but they're not there the principalities and powers of the air, they the rulers of the air. They the rulers of nations who submit. And if there ever was a time that we can see nations being ruled by demonic forces, and one of the major things they rule is just a few bucks. 
Just cross the palm a few bucks. And that's it. Those leaders will do anything for that money. And so corrupt. And you see the principalities behind the force, behind them. They submitting themselves. They in disobedience. They in disobedience to God's word. And they've been given a position. But you know what? Jesus said, you make friends using the mammon of unrighteousness. Those who you made friends with, they will receive you into everlasting habitations. You have a place. Doesn't matter what you think. Unless you repent before that day comes, before you're dead, they will surely die and die. The second day. And be cast into the eternal lake of fire. So, thank God, through Jesus Christ, he went back. And the scripture says, um, when, when, when John, the, the apostle John, when he saw Jesus in Revelation 1 verse 12, it says, I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet, girt about the chest with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white as wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, piercing right through. John got such a fright when he saw the resurrected Christ in his glory that he fell down as dead. And it says, and his, his feet were like fine brass, as if burnt in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. And I saw him, and I fell down at his feet as dead. The glorified Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, he saw Jesus. John saw Jesus after his resurrection. In fact, they never even recognized him. But now he saw Jesus in the resurrected power of his glory. And Jesus says to him, lays his right hand on him and said unto him, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Jesus declared, he is the resurrection and the life. He is the power. He is the champion of life who overcame death through his divine resurrection power. And he said he holds the keys of hell and death. He took the keys. And how did he do it? Through death, not just death. It was through the obedience. Through obedience, he became... We see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. And that transfers, that obedience to him, obedient even unto death, transfers to every man that believes, every woman that believes, every child that believes will receive the blessing of God. And it's not just a blanket check and say, okay, everybody's saved. You know, someone says, you know, everyone's saved, they just don't know it. No, they're not saved. The provision has been made for them to be saved, but they're not saved. If they, unless they receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But He has the keys. Jesus Christ, He says, I have the keys. I have the victory. And one of the things about God is that the victory... He didn't need to overcome death. He, he is eternal life. He didn't need to die on our, on our behalf. He didn't need to, but he did. To transfer what Adam had messed up, transfer the blessing of the keys of the kingdom of God, transfer them over to us, that we can have the victory, that we can walk in the fullness of his victory and power. So by one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin. And so death passed upon to all men. People are complaining, yeah, but what about this? All these things that are happening, everything that's going wrong. All those things is because of Adam's sin. Oh, but God is doing this and God is doing that. 
Well, Jesus cleared that up immediately. He said that <clears throat> He is the resurrection and the life. He said that in me you will have life eternal and life abundantly. He came that to give us life. The thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy from us. But Jesus Christ has come to give us life and to give it more abundantly. That we can have an abundance of God's life. That we can have fellowship with the Father. That the life of God can now be transferred through us. So, he transferred the victory. He transferred the victory of the keys of, the, of hell and death. He transferred to us. So now the scripture says, So death, where is your sting? Where is your sting? Those loved ones of ours that have gone on before, they've just transferred addresses. Just transferred addresses. Like our friend, Ferdy, Mari said, um, she said, oh, he's just transferred to, to a, a, an address to him. Transferred to glory. We have a transfer right here, but thank God the sting of death is gone because of Jesus Christ. Because he took that sting. Because he paid the full price. And the scripture says that my back, the plowers plowed my back. So while they were ripping this, the flesh of Jesus through the thrashing and, and through all that that he was facing, by his stripes we healed. By his stripes, right then, the veil of the temple was being ready to be ripped. So when we partake of the bread, think about the price. The price was that we can enter into the glory of God. He is the doorway. And to get that doorway open for us, his back had to be opened and ripped apart. He had to pay the full penalty through his blood. So when we partake of the breaking of bread, we need to understand, thank God he has the keys. He's got the keys of hell and death. Death will ha no longer have a sting. <clears throat> Hades doesn't have a place in our lives because we will be transferred into glory the moment those that believe and receive it. I am he that lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. So, even through death, now he transfers to us his life. <coughs> I had this... Uh, <laughs> here it is, yeah. I'll get these papers right. Now it says to us, in that Romans that we read, much more, because and not as the offense, but the free gift, much more the grace of God and the gift by His grace, which by one man, Jesus Christ. You see, it had to take one man, just like Adam. Through Adam, all of these things came upon us, all of the hardship, all of the pain, through one man. Now through one man, Jesus Christ. That's why I took on flesh. Because in flesh, he had overcome Satan on our behalf. As God, he could do it, I mean, just wipe him out. But by one man, Jesus Christ, that gift of grace has abounded unto many. Much more they who receive abundance of grace and the gift, there again, we receive the gift of righteousness, shall reign in this life by there's the doorway through Jesus Christ. So when we take on the blessing of the Lord, we take on that we will reign in this life. So even by uh, grace might reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ. As death reigned because of Adam's sin, so his life will reign and reign in this life. And he wants us to reign and be champions in this life. He is the supreme champion of champions. No one else has the keys. No one else has the authority that Jesus has. That's why the scripture says, All authority has been given unto me. The authority of hell. The authority of death. All authority has been given unto me through obedience. And he says, Now go therefore. Go in that authority. Go and do whatever God has called us to do. Go and be whatever God has called us to be. By His grace, 
by his power through the doorway. He gave us the doorway to enter in. And therefore we can reign in this life through, through the doorway, Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He is the champion of champions. And he says, now you are more than conquerors. So we're not, not going to receive the lie. We're not going to receive the argument, oh, but you can't do this, you can't do that, uh, you don't have what, is, what it takes. All of those excuses is what Satan wants us to believe. God has withheld from you, Eve, the knowledge of good and evil. I mean, you could be like God. Little do they know they were, because they were the, the image and likeness of God. And they had all authority, all power, everything in their life supplied. And yet, they were inquisitive. What's this knowledge of good and evil? What's that all about? That's why we're all inquisitive in our lives, many of us anyway. So, we can reign in this life by one Jesus Christ. King of kings and Lord of lords. And that even so my grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. He partook by the grace of God. There's two parts to the grace of God here. It's for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the other part is it's only by the grace of God he could taste it. It's only by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to help him in everything that he did. And thank God, he is the victor. More than conquerors through Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us.